you say things over and over and over and over again, people will start to believe them. Let's hear the truth. Let's know what the truth is. Mr. Jordan, our chairman, told CBS News on January 13th, 2022, that I never said no. He never said no before test, uh, to testify before the January 6th committee. And here's a direct quote. And it, we have it, and I'd like to enter this into the record, Chairman, this direct quote. There's a reason I was concerned about testifying, but I never said, and this was on CBS, I never said no. And that was to Major Garrett. Without I'd objection. like to enter that. Thank you. Um, so I don't know if I should say it again. Would that make everybody believe it more? Because Mr. Swallow thinks that by saying it over and over and over and over and over again, I put a lot of overs in there, Eric, just like you do when, when you speak, you know, or by using the F word when we really didn't need it in the testimony and the hearing, we could have done that in a quite a more gentle way. But it's sensational. It's sensational. And certainly, Mr. Swallow, this hearing's not about you. I know it's been made about you to some degree, but you're a sensational guy, and you've been involved in an awful lot of things that are pretty amazing and questionable, but we're not here to discuss them today because that would be exciting testimony. We're here to discuss, number one, Jim Jordan, if you want to keep bringing it up, and January 6th. And by the way, I wouldn't blame him that he doesn't want to testify, but he said he would because the January 6th committee wasn't bipartisan. It wasn't formulated right. It didn't have any real members on there that were appointed by the minority leader at that time or anybody from really any substance of the Republican Party. The bottom line was it wasn't a real committee. It didn't tell the truth. It didn't do the right thing. Now, do you want me to say that over again? It wasn't the right com committee. It didn't do the right thing. It didn't tell the truth. Do you want me to say it over again? It wasn't a good committee. It didn't do the right thing, and it didn't tell the truth. One more that, time. That One more time? It didn't tell the truth, okay? So I can repeat things a lot, too, and it wastes time. But, you know, you never let the truth get in the way of a good story. And, Mr. Swallow, I'll say this. I don't know if you've ever seen the show uh, Seinfeld, Jerry Seinfeld. Remember that show? Some of us are old enough to remember it, and some of us just like it. And they asked George one time, because he was going to tell a big, fat, whopping lie. And he said, well, the truth is the truth if you believe it's the truth, even if it's a lie. Mr. Swalwell, I believe that's the deal with what you're doing here, and I'm sorry, but sorry to have to say it to you, but that's what I think. Mr. Dunham, thank you for coming in today. Can I ask why the FBI wasn't present at our previous hearing? Yeah, thank you, uh, Congressman. Um, first, I'll be remiss if I didn't mention I was born in Carney's Point. I got a lot of family uh, in South Jersey. God bless your you. your constituents. So Salem County. Beautiful territory down there. I love it. Um, I was uh, with the director. He was testifying before the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence for the annual threat assessment hearing. I uh, had conversation with the staff in advance of, of your March 9th hearing. Please excuse me. I don't mean to be rude. Why didn't they just show up? Isn't it so much easier? It's, you know, like everything else. Why not just give us the documents? Why not just show up? Y you know something's wrong. Intuitively, something's wrong. And you know, again, Mr. Swall asked, what are the American people? They know something's wrong. Over 60% of them know that it's not right. I love the FBI. I want to trust the FBI. And I don't understand some of the things that are going on now. And I don't understand why he wouldn't be here at this meeting. He should have been. I, I appreciate the flexibility of the committee allowing me to, to come at a later date. And uh, I'm here today to answer your questions. Thank you for doing that. Um, you know, and, and by the way, you know what I'm going to do? And I know it's going to aggravate them a lot. I'm going to talk about Mar-a-Lago again. Everybody ready? Because we can say over and over and over again, it doesn't matter. It has nothing to do whether you like Donald Trump or not. You know why it matters? It matters because dozens of FBI agents descended upon Mar-a-Lago where there was a former sitting president who had secret service around him. Were they afraid of the Secret Service? Is that why they needed so many arms? Did they think Donald Trump was going to come out and he was going to start shooting it up? What was the reason, especially when there was cooperation, especially when it was done with our current president, who had somewhat of a similar situation, and this didn't happen? 
So I have the answer to you. Why do we need so many people? Why do we have to be so violent? Why do we have to be so aggressive? Gentleman is permitted to answer. I think, uh, Congressman, uh, as you're aware, there are multiple special counsel investigations looking into uh, not only the, the Donald Trump, uh, former President Trump uh, documents, but also the, the Biden documents as well. And uh, I would defer you to the Department of Justice for questions related to that. It's not an answer. I'm sorry. And I love you from Carney's point, but it's not an answer. I would say at the rank of man, you know, member has made it clear, but what he's made clear is that he's going to use gun violence as a political tool, and that's unfortunate. And it's unfortunate to keep taking these children and their families and running them through the political gauntlet because you want to gain some points with it. Um, that isn't the point of this committee. You know, I have questions. Um, the first question, and I want to thank uh, Congresswoman Lee for bringing this up. <clears throat> It's, it's, it's okay to be Roman Catholic, right? Somebody answer me, please. Yes. Okay. I was getting a little nervous. I'm Roman Catholic. So I'll say yes. It was okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is radical Catholic ideology? Why were we looking into that? What's that about? I'm not able to speak to specifics of the actual product. I think that's what the uh, internal review that I referenced earlier is getting. Doesn't that concern you? Certainly, I agree with the director's statements that, that uh, the product uh, uh, was inexcusable. Yeah, it sure was. What, what would ever lead anybody to think that they could start investigating that? Now, I'm not as good as I should be. I miss mass sometimes, but mostly mass is a very peaceful thing where people go and pray and get holy communion. What, what are we investigating? How did that ever get through at all to even get started? Why did it have to be condemned when it never should have happened? And I, and I just want to say something else, too. Um, since Mr. Jordan was brought up again, I, I really hate doing this because we do have more important things. And Mr. Swalwell stops, I will stop. Uh, Again, here's his quote. There's a reason I was concerned about testifying, but I never said no. And this is a quote that is recorded. It is part of our hearing. It is part of the testimony. The chairman has accepted it, and he has said that numerous times. Now, concern with testifying, I'd be damn concerned in testifying in front of that committee. That committee was a rigged committee. That committee didn't tell the truth. That committee was a political tool and nothing else. And it was shameful that Congress was used in that way. That committee was in nobody's mind or nobody's sense bipartisan. So Mr. Jordan didn't do anything wrong. He's always everywhere. And yeah, I will defend him. I think he's a damn good member and a damn good chairman and doesn't deserve that. But nevertheless, if we've got to say it over and over again, I'll say it over and over again. Just like I've said, if, all you, if you all have to come over and over again and you probably huddle together at the beginning of the day and say all right who's going to have to put up with it today and decide who's going to go and i feel bad that you have to go through it but you do because all we need is the information if we get the information we won't have to go through this process but all i heard today is i can't speak to the redaction i can't tell us why we aren't given access i'm not aware not sure i don't know i don't know why it's so long uh, I don't know about the rule of law in this case. Have to take that back. Have to take it back. We know no more. I'm going to end this today in a similar way to when I ended it the last one. We know virtually no more now than we knew then. You don't have the documents with you, right? Correct? You do not have them? Did somebody answer that? Mr. Dunham, you don't have them. Ms. Bumpus, you don't have them. Mr. Rodriguez, you don't have them. I assume you didn't lose them. Correct? Everybody, am I correct in my assumption? Would please somebody answer me? Uh, you want yes. me to answer that one yeah. too? Or? Yeah, I'd like you all three to answer. I mean, it's a pretty easy question. I, God help us, I hope it's an easy question. Because if you lost them, I'd understand what happened. I mean, we are actively engaged in providing additional information to the committee. We've made 10 responses to the committee since the January 17th letter, including productions totaling nearly 1,000 pages. But you don't, you don't know we, what it's going to be. Why can't we just get all the information, get it done, look at it together if you don't want us just to have it, learn what really happened. We know things happen here that things went awry. We just do. You want to talk about the American people? The American people know something is wrong. They know something went awry. 
They know something is wrong and they just want to get answers, no more or less than we do. We don't want to go on these tangents, but if other people do, we will. Um, who at the FBI made the decision to not comply with these requests until a subpoena was actually issued? Can somebody tell me that? I'm not sure there was a, there's a sole decision maker there. We weren't uh, aware of the uh, school board request until we received the subpoena. We were operating under the January 17th Chairman Jordan letter uh, as our prioritization list to get information to the so, committee for the 118th Congress. So nobody's sure. Did the FBI only begin complying with the committee's various questions on February 3rd? Were, were we complying before then? And is the way, and I'm, you know, the elephant in the room, and it's my last question, and I'll yield back, but are the way that Republicans are treated different in any way than the minority, as when we were the minority, as Democrats? Is that any difference? When the Democrats were the majority and we were the minority, any difference in the way we're treated? You would, absolutely no you difference. You swear to me under oath that there's no difference. There's absolutely no difference, Congressman. We, we respect provided responsive information on the 117th, and that was through the form of written materials, briefings, testimony before the full committee, uh, proactive information that we provide the committee on a routine So then basis. you would swear under oath, all three of you, that the information that we have is no more or less than the information. Point of order, you're, uh, Mr. Chairman. The witnesses may answer. I'm not aware of any difference in how we uh, operate our, our practice and uh, policy. It's consistent. Thank you. I yield back.